Welcome back to the Nasty Metal Protection Channel here at YouTube and of course welcome to the second part of the whole Roots of Thrash. This of course is going to be focusing on the 80s now, mostly early at least. Uh, maybe everything up to about 1983, which of course everything before, uh, I guess you can say before Metallica's debut which of course is not within the stacks or anything right here so while the 1970s definitely you know saw a lot of bands really experimenting with heavier sort of you know compositions more riffs and you know sounds whatever and of, of course even with faster tempos and everything which of course you know really led to the uh, creation of you know speed and thrash and shit like that but it was the 1980s that definitely took what was already kind of already laid, you know, before in the 1970s was more upped up. Everything. Uh, of course, definitely with the beginning of especially, you know, the whole new wave of British heavy metal movement as well. But, of course, even bands that I had talked about in the uh, 1970s also really upped up their stuff within the 1980s. Of course, you know, Judas Priest with both, you know, British Steel and, uh, well, Scream for Vengeance. Probably the two, uh, well, this sound, um, you know, it's of course, you know, like Rapid Fire and, uh, you know, Steeler, you know, and stuff like that, or even like Grinder. Definitely saw them really kind of upping up a bit of the, you know, the more heaviness and the, the you know, speed really kind of reeling pretty much kind of giving forth for that sound of course with this sound really more with the speed as well with like the uh, electric eye running on the wind uh, the tile track as well definitely so you really so more of that foundations for speed and thrash was definitely you know really getting laid down of course even motorhead uh, with of course this and the album before uh, no, uh, ace of spades uh, of course, these guys definitely, you know, were one of the biggest influences on Thrash. But as far as that sound, maybe, that you would really most register with Thrash, really definitely showed it's more on this album with songs such as Iron Fist and, of course, Heart of Stone, which is probably the most really early, real uh, fast, aggressive tracks. Of course, you got... Uh, sex and Outrage, uh, you know, Shut It Down, Speed Freak, and then Bang to Rights. This sound really showed a lot more speed and more aggression on here, but it definitely shows a lot more on what would lead into thrash, in a way. Uh, of course, like again, like I said, the whole new wave of British heavy metal movement, you know what stuff like? Saxon right here, you know, Wheels of Steel, mostly with the song uh, Machine Gun, and uh, especially Machine Gun, really got, and especially if you listen to the live version that was played at Dunnington, it kind of give, if you were to up that up, it probably would sound like Slayer, actually. Of course, right here, you got, uh, you know, with Strong Arm of the Law, mostly with the song Heavy Metal Thunder and 20,000 Feet. Both real fast tracks, and of course when I saw Saxon, Biff Byford definitely, also, before playing the song Heavy Metal Thunder, did say that they were definitely were an influence on that whole scene. So, but of course you can say pretty much about were mostly a lot of the uh, new wave of British heavy metal bands as well. Uh, Iron Maiden, of course. Um, 
instead of snapping the Paul Diano era because of that sort of punk ethic that really kind of seeped it into more of the thrash sound. You know, um, just like stuff like me, Genghis Khan, uh, or Genghis, as it's supposed to be actually pronounced. Or um, Another Life, maybe as well, you know, or uh, Purgatory, Twilight Zone, or Drifter, you know, something like these. Just a real, a lot of the fast, real stuff was also, you know, making it into here as well. Of course, even on the debut for Bruce Dickinson, you also got like Invaders or Gangland. Stuff like that. Some of these real fast sort of, you know, compositions were definitely also a huge influence on Thrash. And of course, even Def Leppard, surprisingly, yes. Uh, stuff like It Could Be You was definitely pretty fast even for a Def Leppard track. And of course, uh, the riff to Wasted, which was a very heavy riff, actually. Um, maybe an answer the master might also can be seen as an, uh, another influence on thrash as well. Surprisingly, yes. This sound is probably the first one right here that definitely saw. Now you can tell that um, a lot of the bands that, you know, the thrash metal musicians, whoever, picked up this album. And of course, even some obscure ones here, like Savage, of course. They were on a split in 1981, the scene of the crime, with both early versions of Let It Loose and uh, Dirty Money. Of course, Metallica would later, for their garage demos, covered Let It Loose. So that definitely says a lot there. Of course, we got Witchfinder General as well. Uh, more on the Doom aspect, but at the same time, a lot of the Doom sounds also made its way into Thrash as well, thus giving more of that Thrash... Though some of these, you know, bands such as me, artillery, you know, really kind of help, you know, really create more app, real, more grabbing, more, you know, very subtle or very, just kind of dark type of writing as well, if you could say, but definitely one, I would say as well. Of course, even Satan uh, as well. Of course, um, James Hetfield uh, definitely picked up a quite a few Satan stuff as well. I think he still wears, I think, a patch. He actually has a vest with a Satan uh, patch. So that says for another influence for Thrash as well, and Satan. And of course, even Satan later on would also kind of really experiment with Thrash as well. And they also went and changed their name to Pariah to play a bit more thrashier type of stuff. So. That definitely says a bit for the influence, but I'll talk about more of that in another video. Of course, even more obscure stuff like Legend as well, that's got some real fast, heavy stuff as well. Especially if you listen to songs such as uh, Why Don't You Kill Me off the uh, Death in a Nursery. Real aggressive, thrashy riff. Just, and it's for like, it was like released 1982, so. It definitely, in which 1982 was definitely a year that really saw a lot of more aggressive, more real fast machine gun type riffing was really start to be even more used. To, which, again, led to a lot of thrash. Because if you listen to also a lot of thrash, you can hear that machine gun riffing as well. Now, of course, even a real more obscure one, which is, of course, Demon Pack. While these guys were also kind of considered a bit of a Venom clone, though they're not. They are not. And another band, Venom, was also a huge influence on Thrash. Yes. Don't, don't j just always throw them as a, oh yeah, they're the craze of black metal. No, no. They really had a lot of huge influence on Thrash, but a lot of extreme genres as well, so don't try and, uh, you know, file Venom in one fucking category for influence. Don't. That because, uh, but Demon Impact as well. A lot of fast stuff here, you know, maybe like uh, Eating Alive, uh, Ain't No Woman, maybe, you know, uh, Cry Witchcraft. A lot of punkish sort of riffing as well here, or, you know, beats and such. Just, again, I. Not really a whole lot of, I don't think thrash musicians really picked up this, but at the same time, for an obscure release, you can actually can hear a bit of the roots for uh, such a genre. Of course, some non, you know, British metal, 
we got here, uh, which it's like while the new wave of British metal were all were a huge influence on thrash, but there was definitely quite a bit of non-British bands that also kind of played its part. Of course, I got some obscure ones here, like Killer, right here. Um, very, it's like while well, their sound is, they always get in, uh, you know compared to Motorhead. While there is a bit of that comparison. They are, uh, to me, I've always said, they, uh, they're they kind of more comparing to, like, a band like Baron Rojo. Just because even Baron Rojo has that sort of, you know, motorheadish sound to them. They, these guys have more of that. But uh, there is still some fast riffing here. Uh, you got the song Ready, to, uh, Ready for Hell um, as well. But of course it's mostly on a uh, wall of sound. You got that track here. Kleptomania. Probably the most, uh, again, very machine gun riffing there. And it's definitely one that you can t tell was if that it might have influenced a few thrash musicians. Maybe in the, uh, their own country of, you know, Belgium. Uh, of course, here, in a, uh, speaking of, you know, stuff like Baron Rojo, here's Spanish band, Obus, surprisingly, yes. Uh, mostly, uh, trying to figure out what track here. There is a real fast track on here, but since most of the songs are, are in Spanish, it's kind of tough for me to uh, tell which track is. But I think it's, I can't re uh, remember, but which track but I think it might be track number six or seven. One that's got real fast riffing could be also, you know, seen as an influence on that. Well, of course, you got uh, uh, Le Esquilera, which really has, it's that sort of, it's a very heavy track, uh, very much, and it has, I guess, even a, a real, you know, stuff that you can probably can see as kind of an influence on Thrash in a way. But it's got a real heavy riff to it. And it also kind of speeds a bit as well. So, yeah, I threw that in here. Of course, we got uh, another pretty obscure one for a Swedish metal band that's Torch here uh, with the EP. Of course, uh, Beyond the Realms of Death and, uh, you know, Retribution or Mercenary, you know, they all got... Uh, yeah, Beyond the Realms of Death, or, yeah, uh, Beyond the Threshold of Pain, excuse me. Beyond the Realms of Death is a Judas Priest song. Don't, don't fucking judge me, because it's fucking called Beyond Bond, the factual album. It was called, uh, it was, you know, just in its full title. Well, of course, on the debut album, uh, uh after this one, the self-titled that I'm talking about, has a song called Watch of the Night that is very fast and, and very thrashy. But that was released in 1983, so that's definitely the year when Metallica's debut was released. But still, the sound, uh, this was of course as a Metal Blade pressing, and also Enigma. But, yeah, I, I can see this also as maybe a bit of an influence on Thrash, maybe very speedy. And here's another one, of course I talked about ACDC in my last video with the song Let There Be Rock, but here's another Australian band especially on this one right here, that has some very punkish, sort of very fast sort of, you know, songs. And that's talking about Rose Tattoo with Assault and Battery. Now, they're a very odd band to talk about, you know, for the roots of thrash, but there is some very punkish, sort of fast type of, uh, you know, songs here like All the Lessons or um, song like Magna Maid, uh, Menzel Madness. Uh, of course, in Suicide City, you know, while they're more rock and roll based, kind of more Motorhead-ish in, in a way. But at the same time, there is some very sort of, very punkish, so a very aggressive tone to them. It's like they don't sound, you know, kind of, you know, happy or go ready. So they very sound very mean. And it just very, sound, uh, of course, it sounds like this band. It sounds like, um, it's very alcohol fused you know very you know just whiskey soaked aggressive sort of tempos and such so yeah i threw that of course of course there's probably a few thrash musicians that definitely probably picked up some rose tattoo albums 
definitely. And of course, they're all also featured on Career Records, which had Saxon. So, you can't argue with that. And of course, here we got right here. I didn't talk about these guys on uh, my last one because of, I guess, of the typicalness. But for me, I kind of have to talk about them, and it's Van Halen. There, of course, a lot of thrash musicians, you know, bought Van Halen's albums. But here, there is a tr it's loss of control. Just the beginning part, that real chugging riff. That very machine gun chugging riff that, that you can't help but, but, you know, tag with speed and thrash. And you can't even help but, but think to yourself that this indeed also helped influence a lot of thrash musicians. Just a real fast chugging riff of, uh, you know, loss of control. It's a very, probably the most fastest song on this one. Probably the most fastest Van Halen song ever made, actually. No, it's a fucking, you know, uh, hot for teacher. No. This is the fastest Van Halen song ever recorded. I don't give a shit what anyone thinks. It's the fastest song Eddie Van Halen has ever fucking recorded. So, that's all I gotta say about that. Of course, I talked about Riot in my last one, but this one was a huge, you can tell, was a huge influence also on the speed and thrash, especially with the song Fight On Under, and of course, even the song Run For Your Life, which has a very punkish ripping, also very similar, mostly, to the likes of Rose Tattoo as well. So, again, very fast sort of riffage, of course, even this album right here, which was the debut for Rhett Forster, also sees some very fast, very sort of real aggressive sort of riffing, especially on uh, songs such as Lone Shark and Violent Crimes. Both real aggressive tracks were even uh, right before the release of Thundersteel. And also... Can't help but also talk about this very album right here, which is Under the Blade by Twisted Sister. This one, actually you can, can see as also an influence on even uh, own New York band, uh, well, Anthrax. Especially songs such as What Do You, What You Don't Know, Sure Can Hurt You, uh, Run For Your Life, even Sin After Sin. Or uh, just maybe Destroyer, but even you got, you know, Under the Blade, Tear It Loose. It's just probably the most, most real fast. And this, and this sound almost borders on heavy speed now in a way, but you can tell that this could also have been seen as an influence on a genre such as thrash. It's a punk ethic as well, and, uh, you know, an attitude, which is one thing that punk definitely gave, you know, to thrash was more on attitude, even though it was, uh, some punk is very fast. And I'm, de I'm definitely gonna get to some punk here in the video, but the speed is definitely characteristic with thrash. But and yes, there is speed and punk. But the thing with punk is it had attitude, which is something you also could hear with a lot of speed and thrash, mostly thrash metal. It's very attitude, you know. Uh, based. It's built around that type of, you know, attitude. And of course, also, you got Merciful Fate. You can't help bring them up. They were also very even influential, influential to Metallica and even uh, Slayer, especially for a Slayer's album Hell Awaits, which they were listening to a lot of Merciful Fate. So, if you want to know for why Hell Awaits sounds the way that it is, it's because of Merciful Fate. Especially maybe with this album and Melissa. And here we go with the two last bands. These are both Canadian ones. We got here is Anvil. Uh, while this is this album was released in 1983, and possibly could also could be contended for probably one of the first thrash releases. Yes, I'm gonna make that argument. But they came before. They their first album was released in 1981, originally under the name Lips but changed to Anvil and was still kept with the same title, Hard and Heavy, had some real fast tracks on there, mostly one, which was Bedroom Games. 
Uh, but on it was metal on metal that really saw them push up the ante with, of course, you know, you're like, Mothra or the track 666. Vols rule aggressive tracks. So here, last one. This one I'm throwing in here is probably because while Exciter may be considered more speed metal, but this sound was also released a month before Metallica's debut Kill 'Em All. And in terms of its speed and aggression, I think Exciter might have beat Metallica to the punch, but the thing is, Metallica got more of the popularity vote, in my opinion. But still this still should be up there as one of the first you know speed thrash albums and not just metallica's kill em all but still i put that in there for that well of course as far as punk which is probably where thrash got more of its attitude from than just probably riffing or you know musically but i think it's more attitude based of course i'm talking about stuff like corrosion of conformity and of course dri while these are later albums, these still fall in within, you know, that. Of course, this sound, of course, which is the one that's playing in the background. Um, of course, these, these bands were both formed on the same year of 1982. And, but, and of course, they also contributed to also another subgenre, which I'll definitely get to on a later video. But... I'm going to save that, which of course is Crossover, which of course was probably coined with this album. But, still, a lot of the attitude for Thrash came from Punk. So, that's why I want to set that one straight. Most of the riffage for Thrash came from a lot of the new Waver British Heavy Metal stuff and non-stuff. But, as far as when it comes to Punk, which was all, which the hardcore stuff really didn't come out until the early 80s, actually. Early to mid. Everything from like maybe 1981 to 82 really saw the emergence of hardcore punk, which added a lot as well of influence to the thrash uh, stuff, especially which is something that really Slayer really brought to the table was that sort of punk influence. Even Metallica did have a little bit of a punk influence as well. Listening to stuff like Discharge, but, but again, I think when it came to a lot of the riffs, whatever, punk isn't one genre that you look for riffs. It's one that looks for attitude, which is something that really brought, that influenced a lot of thrash metal. And again, like I said, thrash metal ended up really taking a lot of that attitude with it. You mix a lot of the new Waver Bridge heavy metal stuff and maybe early, you know, 70s stuff, whatever, that really had that fast stuff, but apply it with the attitude of punk, you pretty much do get thrash. So, the roots right there, cemented. So, I kind of went on for a bit. So, until, so, uh, of course, if there's a few bands that you felt that I didn't bring up, maybe, you know, I kind of wanted to keep this a little so short a bit, but... If there is some bands that you felt like I didn't talk about, definitely put that in the comments below. It's definitely uh, start some discussions, maybe. So, until then, this is Heavy Thrasher. See, I'm out. I'll see you later.